Hey, what's up, family? This is a late video, so I'm gonna make this quick. Has anyone heard about Lizbeth Mateo? If you haven't, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her, and I wanna get everyone's thoughts on this because she is the first undocumented immigrant that has been appointed to a statewide post in California. And a little bit seems like, yay, this is great, and then some of it seems like, ah, we're trying to actually like really get at Trump with, with some of this. So, again, undocumented immigrant, and now she's uh, running a post in, in California. So she's 33 years old. Her name is Lizbeth Mateo. She's an attorney. She's an immigrant rights activist, uh, rightfully so, of course. And she was just recently, and she was just recently appointed um, to an advisory committee that seeks to improve access to college for low-income California students. Um, it's a committee that's called Cal SOAP or SOAP, which stands for Student Opportunity Access Program. Uh, Project Grant Advisory Committee, um, which is a whole lot to say. Um, and basically, yeah, she's from Mexico. She was born in Oaxaca, Mexico. She was brought to Los Angeles by her parents when she was 14. Um, she didn't know English until she was in high school, but became the first person in her family to graduate from college. Um, and this is all according to uh, uh, De Leon, Kevin DeLeon's office, the uh, person uh, who runs the, the he's basically the state senate pro tem in, in California. <coughs> so Mateo, um, this this young lady here, which you have got you know different images of, so I'll I'll show some of them as I go through here. But basically, Mateo, she uh, went on to get a law degree in, at Santa Clara, California, or Santa Clara University in 2016. She passed a California state bar exam last year, and now she has her own private practice in Wilmington, California, which is in a suburb of Long Beach. Uh, she's been a law student. She says, um, I always went for things because even if I felt inadequate, I thought um, I could add something of value, um, which is, for me, it's, it's a very, really great and very sincere um, you know, attitude that she had, knowing that she um, was undocumented, knowing the resistance that she would encounter. Um, she actually tweeted yesterday, um, in law school I often wondered if I was fit to be in uh, the law journal or in mute court because not many people with my same background, again being undocumented, did. I always went for it, even if I felt ina inadequate. I thought I could add something of value. I hope to do the same with student aid commission and then she's just the hashtags undocumented and unafraid. And so there's been a lot of replies to her tw to her tweet. Um, some of them have been derogatory, um, of course, from critics. So I'm sure this video will probably get the same types of, of comments on her. Um, but for me, I'm, I, I am kind of split because while yes, I, I fully um, support People that come to the United States um, looking for an opportunity to better themselves and especially to, to those that look for an opportunity to better others around them, which and, and is, is definitely Lizbeth Mateo's case. She bettered herself and she's using that to actually help other people. Um, as, as Trump has mentioned, and as many people who support Trump has, mission, has mentioned, many people, many, I use in quotes because I'm, I'm, I have not done the research myself, many people from Mexico come and they're murderers and drug dealers and all this stuff. And, and yes, people that came from Ireland and people that came from Germany and people that came from England, um, heck, pretty much everyone that came from Spain uh, to the Americas, they were all murderers. They, they, they murdered the native and indigenous species. There, there are people with good intentions and there are people with bad intentions that come to the United States. So that's where I draw the line because we can, we can better know who the people are and what their intentions are if they are documented when they come here. And I know it is a process, but it is a process that, that helps us to better understand who is in our country. I use the analogy of, of one's own house. You don't leave your doors open and your windows open and just let any old stranger walk into your bedroom, especially if you have children that you're trying to protect. No, you have doors, you have walls, you have windows. And, and if you're gonna let someone in, if you're gonna let a stranger in, if you're gonna let someone who's living on the street into your house, do you not ask them their name first? Do you not ask you know questions about them to get to know them a little better, to get to know what type of food they wanna eat, to get to know, hey, do you want a towel to, to take a shower with? We, we document people that come into our own homes. So why aren't we applying this same sort of uh, uh, common sense 
to, to situations like this. Again, I'm not saying that, that Lizbeth Mateo is a bad person. I, I applaud what she's done, but I really do side more with the conservative view of this. We can't have undocumented people just pouring into our country. Now, the way many conservatives are going about this whole thing, I feel like could be with a little bit more tact. I'm glad that, that DACA is still around. Um, this, this young lady, Lizbeth, has actually tried to apply um, under DACA to stay, and, and the USCIS, the Customs and Immigration Services, has denied her request a few times because she actually took part in um, this, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but basically it's this program where she'll cross the border and then come back to see if they'll, if they'll realize that she's undocumented. And because of that, basically, they're, they're, you know, not allowing her to actually apply for citizenship, which I think is, is stupid. It, it's a stupid reason to. Um, so California has really been at the center of, of, of all this. Um, you've, you've basically got the, their resistance to the Trump administration is pretty much at the forefront. He was just there yesterday in San Diego and he was trumpeting about the whole wall. And so everyone thinks that the move by uh, Kevin DeLeon to appoint her to this position was, was pretty much in response to that. So, <clears throat> And, and there's been other instances in California where the state is really fighting against the, the, the federal government to, you know, ensure that people that are coming into the country, whether documented or undocumented, are still given a fair opportunity. So one of the statements was, while Donald Trump fixates on walls, California will continue to concentrate on opportunities. And again, I, I completely agree with that. I, I agree with California, but I also agree with the conservative approach and that's while we might not need walls you need to understand the people that are coming into your country and unfortunately uh with the current status people can just come in and do whatever they want and again i'm not going to get into you know if, if did she go to public school did her parents pay taxes any of that stuff because i don't know all that but if they didn't and if she was able to to basically have these same freedoms and opportunities as people that are paying into the system and that's just that's that's wrong in my view and i'm just using a common sense approach so again i would love to hear what other people think about this i am an open book i am an open mind so please give me your thoughts give me your point of view and let's discuss it let's let's discuss it and see uh you know what shakes out thank you all for listening thank you all for watching and i will see you all tomorrow peace out